舒服哦。啊 ，This is a lie. This is the Ningbo Focus. Today, Lee and I have come down to the central business district, to Yinzhou Central Park. And while we're here, we will be having a look at one of the treasures of modern Ningbo, as well as soaking up the sun in one of the city's most beautiful urban landscapes, and feasting our eyes on Ningbo's world-famous architecture. Just inside the north gate, and a short walk from UNNC, lies this impressive structure. What do you make of it, Lee? It feels very old yet very new at the same time.、Mm. So the form and the materials of the building really let it blend in nicely with the natural environment. Right, that was one of the reasons why the architecture Wang Shu has given the Pritzker Prize. Yes. Now, Wang Shu is known for designing many distinctive buildings around Ningbo. Another one of them being the Contemporary Art Museum down in Lao Waitan. And it was the work of Wang Shu in Yinzhou Central Park that brought him to the fore for this honor. The Pritzker Prize is often referred to as the architectural equivalent of the Nobel Peace Prize, and previous winners include the Torres de Satellite in Mexico in 1957. The Sydney Opera House in Australia in 1973, and the Tate Modern Art Museum in London in 2001, and it is awarded to a living architect whose built work demonstrates a combination of those qualities of talent, vision, and commitment, and has produced consistent and significant contributions to humanity and the built environment through the art of architecture. So, in 2008, it was awarded to Wang Shu and to Ningbo's very own Ningbo Museum. And to find out why, let's take a closer look. Now the museum opened its doors in December 2008. So Lee, why don't you show our visitors at home around? Okay, come with me. Inside the museum are three floors covering 30,000 square meters, and are all crisscrossed by large stairways, which Wang Shu intends as a representation of the crossing of valleys, and give a strong sense of being inside what can only be described as a grand cathedral carved from inside a mountain. The main feature of the Ningbo Museum is the Ningbo Collection, in which Ningbo history comes to the fore with a rich, appealing array of artifacts and displays covering several thousand years of Ningbonese history. Now, perhaps to some people, a visit to a history museum may seem less than exciting at first, but I promise you, with the winding journey taken through these spacious and carefully thought-out exhibits, the Ningbo Museum does a really great job of keeping it fresh and varied for both young and old. There's a splendid variety of artifacts and scenes, both informative and dramatic. There's artwork and dioramas on small and large scales, and also some curious photographic archives of 19th and 20th century Ningbo. All information is in both Putonghua and English, and we recommend you plan for about 45 minutes to an hour to wander around the museum's second and third floors. Oh, and one last thing: admission is free. One of the first things that jumps out at you about the Ningbo Museum is the texture, and this is down to something called wa pan, a technique used by local farmers to rebuild their dwellings. After the striking of natural disasters and the such, and in fact, every brick in this building is appropriated from a demolition site somewhere in the local area. Now, when seen from a distance, the Ningbo Museum blends harmoniously with the lush, verdant surroundings of Yinzhou Park, and together they form a picturesque landscape. But step a little closer, and the 24-meter-high overhang gives it a looming, almost ominous presence. 
However, if you factor in the irregularities of the Wapan brickwork, as well as the curious, almost zany layout of the masses of small windows, it's almost as if a vast Swiss cuckoo clock went head to head with the Titanic's slightly eccentric granddad, and the result is a dignified, authoritative, and yet compellingly friendly architectural statement of how design should complement its natural surroundings. This is especially evident when seen up close on the museum's roof. Everything is angular and irregular, which gives a very organic feel. Now, aside from the use of wire pan, walls in the museum have also been built using concrete. But instead of being poured into wooden forms, they've been poured into bamboo forms instead. This is such a traditional technique that teams of builders had to be trained just to make it. Wang Shu's ideas and influences extend further than just the Ningbo Museum building. Which gives us a perfect reason for working in the park. That's right. In fact, I can think of more than one reason. Mm -hmm. I can think of ye, liang, xie, si, mm, reasons. Wait, is that Ningbo Hua? Sure is. Here we are in the beautiful Yinzhou Park. It's a lovely sunny day. Yeah. In fact, a great day to learn some Ningbo Hua. Yeah. Today we will learn from one to five. Numbers one to five, that's right. Okay. Let's start with one. Number one, in Ningbo Hua. Yeah. Number two. Number two, Liang. Number three, Xie. Number four. Number four is Si. Number five. Number five is Hm. Okay, let's reveal it. Okay. Number one. Number one. Yeah. One. Yeah. Number two. Liang. Two. Liang. Number three. Xiao. Three. Xiao. Number four. Si. Four. Si. Number five. Number five is mm. five. Mm. Okay, it's very easy, right? I hope so. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Okay. In Yinzhou Park, there are five, mm, five buildings, all designed by Wang Shu, and they're called the Five Scattered Houses. They are designed according to four important rules. Four. Si. Four. These four design maxims are number one, to design a place where natural elements and people can coexist. Number two, to use local and original materials and technology. Number three, to display quality in design rather than just using expensive materials. And number four, to set an example for the future development of Ningbo. In the words of Wang Shu, these rules are specifically to avoid the trend of soulless commercial structures so commonplace in today's society. Okay, let's see what he came up with. This is number one of five. Yeah. And it's called tea house number one. Tea house number one also known as Broken Shadow. This is the building number two. Number two, Liang, number two. And it's a gallery. And it's called One Wave, yeah, and Three Twists, Xie, yeah. three, Xie. Yeah. It's building number three. Building number three, Xie, yeah. three. And it's a cafe, and it's called Lotus Leaf in the Wind. Just over there is building number four. Building number four, Si Four, and it's called Single Sand Garden. This is the fifth building. Number five, mm -hmm. and it's actually an office and design space, and it's called Waves, Twisting and Undulating. It's time for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, how many bricks were used in the construction of the Ningbo Museum? If you know the answer, post it on the Weibo page. Weibo page, right here. Don't forget to add us.
So you could say that was a walk in the park. Yeah, you could say it was a walk in the park, Lee. And it looks to me definitely like springtime is here. So why don't we celebrate international style, Ningbo focus style, with a snapshot story. So thanks for watching. And until next time, see why. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another snapshot story. And as we all know in Ningbo, that if the sun is out, then the fun is out. And of all the spring festivals, the Hindi Holi is one of the best and the most popular. Now, color is laid out on the tables, and believe me, it gets very messy very quickly. Naturally, the youngsters are the first to dive in and show the way. And of course, the bigger the fun, the bigger the kids. Another aspect of Holi is that there are no formalities between people. Everyone can let their hair down, and the friendly staff at Ganesh's know how to have fun. Holi is definitely a time for everyone to get involved. And when we say everyone, we mean everyone. Of course, as well as great music and laughter and sunshine, what every color warrior needs is a good feed of delicious Indian cuisine. And after that, well, it's back at it for more color and good times. From all of us at the Ningbo Focus, we wish you a colorful springtime. So see you again soon, and goodbye for now.